Hi everyone, my name is Gary McMahon and I'm a core Cloud Solution Architect. I wanted to celebrate a recent GA announcement on the 17th of May, and this is in relation to Azure Virtual WAN and its routing intent and routing policy feature. Now I say celebrate because I inherited one or more customers that were early adopters of vWAN, and they quickly ran in to a limitation, which is a lack of secured hub cross-region capability. Now, in terms of um, the history regarding this, I just wanted to firstly show a workaround solution, which was solid, albeit required the customer to make use of UDRs and static routing in both the actual root table of the virtual hub router and static routes on these connection objects. Now, the situation was improved when we introduced the BGP pair feature meaning what we're looking at here is the workaround, an NVA VNet with indirect spoke VNet architecture. Now, thankfully, as of the 17th of May, we now announce uh, routing intent and routing policy. Again, the limitation is lifted. Customers now can deploy secured hubs. Now, those are hubs where you have placed either Azure Firewall or third-party NVA, or even integrated third-party security provider solutions like Checkpoint, IBOS, Zscaler, inside of these secured hubs. So here's just the big picture view. Just consider a single virtual WAN with multiple secured hubs. Now, in terms of additional terminology, we speak of branches. Now, these branches could be, as shown here, a remote user via point-to-site VPN could be a branch office either via VPN site to site, IPsec, or more fashionable SD-WAN integration. Or lastly, it could be a main data center connected via express route. So these are the branches. Now the promise now with vWAN is this globally fully meshed network capability. So where I'd like to go next is just this solution image, which I've now implemented in my own subscription. And I just wanted to walk through these um, three flows, actually. So look here, the first flow is where I have a VNet, which is connected to its hub in UK South. But the traffic is destined, as you can see, to a VNet, which is in East US 2. Now, now the feature's gone GA with routing intent and routing policy, this is doable. So the traffic would go from the UK South VNet to its local hub and firewall, which would need to allow the flow through to the remote firewall in the remote hub over our backbone. Uh, so subject to firewall policy, again, that flow will hit the target. That's flow one. Now, flow two is where I've then mimicked a branch office. I've created an isolated VNet, yeah, which is not connected to the hub. Instead, I use routing and remote access service to establish a IPsec VPN tunnel into a gateway of the secured hub, in this case, in West Europe. From there, traffic would be at the mercy of the Azure firewall inside of the secured hub which knows of the trusted address space. So in this example, 10.050/24 is permitted through to the target, which is a VNet in West Europe. Now, lastly, just adding a bit more sort of complexity, flow three is where the branch office lives in the UK, but the user wishes to target a producer or target in East US2 regions. So here we can enable through VWAN, the UK branch office would connect over site to site VPN into the gateway, uh, pass through its local firewall over our backbone to the remote hub and firewall, which is then allowing that flow through to a VNet, which is in an opposite uh, region to the user. So next, let me uh, split screen. I've got the solution on the left hand side. I have Azure Portal on the right hand side. Let me first navigate to my virtual WAN. So as you can see at the top level, the icon denotes a secured hub in UK South, West Europe, East US 2. As shown in the drawing, if I scroll far enough to the right, you can see evidence of two VPN sites. Yeah, these are the branch offices in the UK and Europe. 
And as you can see here, Azure Firewall is deployed. These hubs are all secured virtual hubs. I wanted to pay attention here to this new blade, the routing intent and routing policy. So as you can see here, I have two levers. One is for internet traffic, the other is for private traffic, which by default is RFC 1918. So as you can see for internet traffic, it defines a next hop of the firewall in the hub. And similarly for private traffic, it would do the same. So this is covering both um, north to south, east to west traffic, if that is your requirement. So next, let me navigate to effective routes. Now, the first thing to draw your attention to is in this drop down, you've got the option of Azure Firewall. Now, for the first time, you can now, using this mechanism, determine the effective routes of your Azure Firewall. So you have more insight than you've ever had. But in addition, I'm going to go to route tables because I want to look at the default route table of my hub of my virtual WAN. OK, so what I'm showing here is the effective routes of my secure virtual hub. So as you can see, by making use of routing intent and routing policy, my quad zero route is next hop Azure Firewall. And so to this RFC 1918 address space for that private traffic, defining a next hop of Azure Firewall. So next, let me navigate to my firewall policies and drill into the policy for my UK South Firewall. Very simple setup under my network rules here. So I just wanted to consider this, this second rule here. Now this is allowing the VNet in UK South to communicate through to the VNet in East US 2 via TCP 22 or SSH. So again, 10060 slash 26 is here and 10080/26 is the uh, prefix of the vnet in east us2 so again this is allowing that flow one now the key thing to state is obviously you have to configure both ends this is allowing the traffic to egress the firewall over our backbone to the remote hub and firewall so next let's just back up and have a look at the um, policy for East US2 firewall and its network rules. And from here, we should be able to recognize this top rule, which in essence is, is saying, again, when traffic originates from 10060 slash 26, which is here, destined to 10080 slash 26 on TCP 22 to permit that traffic. Now I have similar rules to allow flow two, which is from the branch office address space um, in, and flow three, which would be from the UK branch office um, through to a VNet, which is in the opposite region. So again, just the power now of this any-to-any -any connectivity, VNet to VNet, uh, VNet to branch, branch to branch, etc. And next, let me hop onto uh, my VM, uh, which I've deployed inside of the UK South. VNet. As you can see, I have a 10.06.4 IP, which is exactly here. Now for flow one, I'm targeting 10.08.4. So using a simple SSH test, I can now be challenged to authenticate. And as if by magic, I'm now on a VM which is in East US 2 um, region with 10084, which is the IP here. This is the first flow. Again, it's made possible through routing intent, routing policy, having file policy in both regions, which is allowing the communication to um, flow end to end. Next, let me jump onto my uh, Europe branch office network. So just to evidence, I have an IP 10.05.4, which lives within this Europe branch office prefix. This traffic should, through firewall policy, come over the tunnel, be permitted through the firewall in West Europe to its target 
of 1007.4. So again, using a simple SSH test. I'm being challenged for authentication. And again, I'm now on my West Europe VM inside of this West Europe VNet with 1007.4, which is the IP here. So hopefully this has um, helped to educate uh, in terms of just why I'm wanting to celebrate the GA, which happened on the 17th of May. Thank you very much for your time.